That's an orb. That was dipping. Whoa. It's totally. Yeah, that's that one like that it's shit. It's not tiny. It's just jetting right Dawn by. ended up seeing this one. Good eye, Dawn. Several of us saw this one. It was heading like northwest. It was kind of beige, and it was only like 400 feet up there. So it was cooking. This thing had to have been going at least 100 miles an hour. Anyway, this is just another one that got away. Hey, this is Jay Lee. Hope all is well. Yeah, I just want to talk about a few things that we saw at our UFO sighting event on November 24th, 2019 over at Hollydale Park. Wow, I think we saw probably about 35 objects this day. I want to thank all the new people that came to our event. I really love uh, being there when you guys end up seeing your very first UFO. I want to thank Fosto, Shelley, Chris, Yasmin, John, and Jesse Contreras who just wrote this book. It's so fantastic. It's called How to Summon UFOs and Extraterrestrials. Uh, it's a great insight into what we're doing. Definitely pick it up. So the first thing I want to show you is this. This thing looks like a tree from a distance, but if you look at it up close, you'll see that it's not a tree. It has these things called arrays. This is a cell phone tower. The cell phone tower is made to look like a tree, you know, based on the city building code. It's meant to camouflage technical equipment. You could tell it's not a tree because it has this thing I call indications of imitation. And this indication of imitation reveals that this thing is not what we think it is. It's usually found alone in an unobstructed area. So you have to realize that right off the bat, something is strange with it and you have to look into it a little bit closer. That's what we do with these objects. And if you think about it, how hard is it to see just a normal object? What are the probabilities of you seeing something abnormal? So we'll be looking at some of those things today. First of all, it was easy to tell which way the wind was blowing and it was blowing east. There was definitely an onshore breeze on this day. How can you tell? There was a few balloons that flew from the west to the east. It was obvious. And here's one now. It carries the classic shape of a latex balloon, which is oblong or teardrop shape with a tether that's attached to the neck and the lip of the balloon. It doesn't get more classic than this. So you might think that why would you even bother videotaping something like this? And I'll show you why. The reason why we videotape everything is because you might catch a flyby. For example, this one. The balloon is what we call a leader. They capture your attention. With the camera rolling, it makes an appearance. I'm not sure if you were able to see this one, but as this balloon drifts east, notice an orb passing just underneath the tether. I was actually able to stabilize this orb and it passed underneath it and slowly stopped and started to turn around and then simply disappeared. Okay, so let's review. A typical latex balloon has an oblong or teardrop shape. Number two, it's got a lip and a neck where you tie the tether onto. There's only one. And the other characteristic of a latex balloon is that it has this thing called a drip point, a dark spot at the very, very top, complete opposite of the lip and the neck. So this brings us to the first object that we saw this day. It was a perfectly round black one. Perfectly round should be an indication that you should investigate this thing further. It's not 100%, but it could be an indication of imitation. At this point, you have to look for more anomalies. I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but it looks like to me that the tether is attached to two different places on the bottom of this balloon. So let's take a closer look, because if it is, it's highly unusual. It looks to me that it has the morphology of a Chlamydomonas, where the flagella exit in two different places at the bottom. It's for motility. So this thing is mimicking a biological entity that's very interesting. This is something that we have to take into consideration. This next one is what I call a paradesis. It's basically a form that's been put together. It does change its structure, so it's a form of morphoplasm. This structure is a kind of a conglomerate of like a whole bunch of aerial debris. When I see a structure like this, I always kind of look for some of the details that, that it shows. And what I'm really looking for is a hitchhiker, something that kind of puts together all these pieces of debris and kind of hides behind it. It's, it's like a form of uh, camouflage. What does a hitchhiker look like? They look weird. They're kind of indescribable, but they're kind of a blob. Because if you think about it, why would anybody put something like this together? And what's the chances of you seeing something like this? It's definitely very strange. 
One of the best Paradisus that I've ever seen was from uh, my friend Jonathan Castro. It was just an amazing capture. I'm very impressed. Definitely, Jonathan Castro is one of the best UFO communicators I've ever seen. But here are a few others that I saw. Here's another one that I thought was strange. Now, typically, foil balloons are kind of poofy. Filled with helium, they are convex. In other words, they're not flat. But check this one out. The pentagon shape, perfectly normal. The color, perfectly normal. But the convexity, very not normal. There's a tether tag, but there's no tether. 100% of the balloons sold in stores have tethers. How come this one has no tether? What had to have happened in order for this one not to have a tether? I mean, how hard would it be to just pull off one of these tethers? It's not easy. This one actually hung out with us for a little while and finally moved toward the ocean against the wind. I guess you can call this one a pancake balloon. Think you can pick up one of these guys over in the store? It's great, crystal clear. Is this perfectly round? Yes, perfectly round. Whoa. Perfectly round. I might want to brighten it up a little bit. ISO. Oh, go ahead, ISO it. Okay, Here's another one that was moving in the opposite direction. This is what we call a pearl orb. This one was not directly over our heads. This one was perfectly round and just like hung out for about 20 minutes and then slowly made its way toward the ocean. This one was perfectly round with no tether. We call for weird things to show up to our location and these things show up. For those people who are having difficulties trying to comprehend, what are the chances for these things to show up to our location? We set the date, time, and place. We post it on social media, and these things show up. When we call, they come to our location. There's probably a lot more in the sky, but we only saw 35 of them. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. We always have a great time together. When they show up, it's very exciting. Well, I hope you liked the video. If you haven't joined, please join LA UFO channel on meetup.com, and you'll get to know uh, when the next uh, event is going to be taking place. Thanks for hanging out. I know it's a long video, but anyway, had a good time uh, putting it together, and I'll see you guys next time.